Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Or as it were, InfoWars. Why would I say that? Because yours truly, uh, you may remember a lot of the people that found this show have done so via uh, InfoWars and the various contests and things that they have done well. As you can see by the graphic here that is bringing us into our show, yours truly has entered another InfoWars contest. Now this is going on until July 4th, so I'll be doing these shorter shows the entire time. And I've got a surprise for everyone, including anybody at InfoWars or Prison Planet who may be listening. How many of you know about Buddy Puff, the fictional intern at The Correct Views? How many of you know that Alex Jones quite frequently has fictional weird characters that go on his show? I'm going to enter among my many videos, Buddy Puff in the show. So I need you to do me a favor. I need you in the comment live to leave encouraging words for Buddy Puff. And with that said, we're going to get into it. I'm picking an article that was posted on InfoWars because for my initial posting that I did, and again, you're allowed many, my initial posting, I used um, one of my stories. So now we're going to go with one directly from Prison Planet. And this is something that I know a little bit about. Um, many of you will know that I'm a DJ. You've heard me mention it many times over the years. Um, let me tell you a little story about hip hop and what rap and hip hop bring. And when I compare it to other kinds of music, um, regular listeners know there's nothing I personally dislike more than R&B, hip hop, anything with vocal running. Melissa, Ma, no. Um, and I don't like what they call bro country. I just can't stand either one. However, I've noticed something distinct to hip hop. You can play as a DJ or as anybody who owns a club will attest to. You can play all kinds of music. You can play Slayer, Marilyn Manson, or whatever. There's no problem. A lot of that can be kind of gory, and there's no problem at all. None, zero, zero, nada. You can play country music. You usually don't have any trouble. dubstep, trap, whatever you want to say. However, the moment you play hip-hop, a lot of music written by people of color who choose to drop N-bombs as if they were handing out Tic Tacs because it somehow makes them feel better, that brings fights to a club. I don't know why. Perhaps it's because it's sold as more real. I think a lot of people listen to other kinds of music, particularly metal, and understand that this is part of the uh, the Edgar Allan Poe, Stephen King of music, if you will. Yeah, there are bands that take it real, but many, many of their fans fortunately do not. For some reason, and I've had people opine that it could be because there is a sort of status that is given by being a real G or in a gang or whatever moniker you want to put on it. That is being sold as trendy and cool and something to aspire to. So now you've got Obama pandering to this community who is slowly but surely realizing that everything I said is true. That doesn't mean they're going to stop doing what they do. I don't think they should. It's the First Amendment. Welcome to America. However, a lot of them are starting to realize, hey, wait a minute. We have amazing unemployment numbers in our communities, thanks to Donald Trump. And you know what? We did not have that with Obama. And they're starting to see the light. So now you have um, Obama pandering and the left just like pleading other rap stars that if they see the light, whatever they do, don't talk about it. Um, and I, it reminds me of Emo Phillips. How many of you remember the comedian? Whatever you do. Don't open the cellar door. And of course, once he did, it became, you know, the outside world. Listen to this. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, a report Obama pleads with Jay-Z to prevent other hip-hop artists meeting with Trump. Don't even talk to him. 
Former President Donald, excuse me, former President Barack Obama has reportedly asked Jay-Z to encourage other hip-hop artists not to meet with Donald Trump following the firestorm of publicity over Kanye West. They, the claim is being made by pro-Trump activist Josh Cornett, who tweeted, quote, sources are confirming that former President Barack Obama has called Jay-Z several times over the past month pleading with Jay-Z to discourage fellow hip-hop artists from meeting with the president. Now, even if you're one of these people that greatly dislike Donald Trump, might I ask you really quick here whether or not, if you think he had the facts on his side, he would just use them, why would he be pleading? I can tell you why. There's a very good chance that the left including Obama, of course, is well aware that people of all cultures and communities are understanding that the powers that be want us fighting each other. And this isn't about race or color. This is about being lied to by Democrats. The tweet has received over 7,600 retweets and over 10,000 likes since being posted. Donald Trump Jr. also liked the tweet, leading some to speculate that he may know that the story is true. While the story remains unconfirmed, it would make political sense for Democrats to deter pipe, pop icons from being seen to endorse President Donald Trump in any way as the midterms draw near. Um, and the article is worth reading, friends, because there's a lot of logic here. Let's face it. Let's be real here. George Bush let down a lot of Republicans, George Bush Jr. And, all right, fine, to some degree, George Bush, I'll leave the misspeak stand. Um, but George W. Bush left a lot of people down. Now, those who supported Obama the most are finding out exactly what that feels like. And friends, that brings us to the Dumdy of the Day. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award will be coming most likely this weekend. You are an idiot, uh, the techno version. I put it in the credits, but it doesn't say who it is. It just says you are an idiot, techno version. Friends, listen to this. Fingerprint left in Play-Doh leads to shoplifting suspect. How stupid. I, I can understand being, you know, maybe not the head of your class, but how does this person even get through life? A Massachusetts police department says a fingerprint left in a hook of Play-Doh led them to the shoplifting suspect. Uh, Leishner police responded to Walmart on December 11th after an employee found several electronic anti-theft devices had been covered in the malleable clay-like toy in an apparent attempt to neutralize them. The attempt to disable the spider wrap devices failed and the suspect fled. So basically, he used Play Doh to hide the cameras, which then promptly went ahead and gave his fingerprint to the police officers. Brilliant. Hey. If criminals were any smarter, that would be a danger to us all. We have to wonder how many of them are, actually, and are still out there getting away with crimes. Fortunately, that person, not so much. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. You can donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. And for purposes of the contest, you are listening to Sam DeGangie in Full Wars. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to win this contest, and I'm going to hopefully end up the Ohio correspondent, or better, with Alex Jones. Let me know what you think, guys. Hit share, and thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing, retweeting, or otherwise getting the word out, because we know that Facebook and YouTube are against us. But it's up to you guys. Thanks.